talk whilst glassing, dude. All right, so uh, we're down here in Deming, Mexico, the Florida Mountains, in the hunt of an ibex. We've seen a couple of them. We saw some last night. We saw some this morning. Beautiful billy. With sunlight hitting them. They're just cool animals. So we're uh, going to try to get some and uh, figure out then how to get close enough to them. Hey, not uh, shoot them on top of a cliff. I like it. The beaver has found even more. He's and I'm glad they're called ibex because it makes them sound a lot cooler. And we're down here shooting goats. Not on the very, very far, but there's our secret weapon. Oh, yeah. Percentage followers you have to be, right? You would think so. I mean, the odds of running across something like this. Why do you have Spotted 800 yards. Two, two of them are bedded. We're gonna see what we can do.
little sneaky IMAX. Got away. We don't even know where they went. We closed in from 1600 to about 500 in 20 minutes. Only to have them vanish. Oh, hang on. End of day one. Look at that. Oh. We were close, probably a couple times, right? Maybe? <laughs> it's anybody's guess. <laughs> Felt close, a couple times. <laughs> this huh? guy's schooled. <clears throat> it's interesting to see the different behaviors and how they react to pressure every day. It's totally unique. Oh, they're just strange. Like they'll stand in one place for that one for two hours and then all at once he's gone. Yeah. For no reason. And I wonder if that's what happened tonight. They just finally all stood up and then took off. Wow. Yeah, once you have them in the scope, don't take your eyes off them. Even to show your buddy where you're looking. Yep. You <laughs> that's our new plan. All right, boys, well done. Day one in the books. Here we go. we'd hoped. We scurried up here. JT's up on a point behind us here, glassing in the Ibex were in that one. And he said that they had started to move across the slope and they were out in these cliffs. So we hurried up from the bottom here. We were actually going up that side, but we came up out of the bottom, climbed up here, got set up for a shot, found one that was a shooter. Well, I believe it was a shooter. At 6.07, we got set up, and right as we got set up, he went around the corner. I think we needed about another minute for us to really get steady and comfortable for the shot, but that's what went down. Okay, we have an IMAX spotted. There he is. Okay. Okay, he's quartering toward us. He's chewing his gun. Just below him, just barely low. I can't see where he went. I know you don't want to talk. 650. 650. Just under. Yeah, that was a rough shot. The sun was coming right at us, so Bryce put his uh, best uh, on the fly engineering skills to use and uh, built me a little shelter, a lean to, <laughs> and uh, I did the job. But yeah, just shot right underneath him. Next time. Look at this. He was up on top of that rock formation, 650, and just barely missed. So we're gonna we're gonna bomb off this real fast. Get up here and see if we can relocate him. Beaver's got him on glass. Hopefully. He, beaver's the one that found them. It's like I've always said, God bless the beaver. We're heading up to double check, look for blood, see if we can get a different angle on this guy after that shot. He was right up on top of this rock right there. So here we go. This thing, this flipping Ibex, was sh shot right off at the other end of this, and he ran off this. The beaver was on the scope, I'm watching. Just run down, run down this, hit this trail and run out here into the open scree, and then disappear. So we'll be looking for 
for blood. And so far, nothing. By the way, this stuff freaking sucks. I don't know what it's called, but I hate it. It's brush that wants to bite you, eat you, chew you up, and then and then want you to die, I think, is what it wants. But anyway, we're uh, almost at the top, so we're going to creep over there and see if we can see anything and hope for the best. straight up I think he's run
this canyon and ended up seeing a big group of billies over here um, on this rock face right there. And we've just been trying to work our way close to them, but all of our experience in this hunt is if you get within a half a mile to a mile, the bastards are gone. So we were just taking our chances and working over. And we got to about, set what, 750? Yeah, I think it was, uh, yeah, 747. So we're trying to get just a little bit closer since my dumbass already missed at 650. <laughs> we're trying to get over to those boulders right there and cut it, cut it down quite a bit. And I look up to our right, and there is a group of Ibex right there. <laughs> and I yell at Kay, I'm like, right there, right there. He doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about. He thinks this rattler's coming at him. And so we dump the packs and I lay the gun down. And apparently there was a different group farther over there. And by the time I got set, I look up and just saw four of them on that cliff face. Case couldn't really find which one I was looking at, so he, so I just saw one that had horns that were short. I said I was picking the last one. I fired. And I heard the thwomp and looked up, and there was just an ibex sailing through the air down into those bushes. So, and I thought so. He shot from right some ibex right there, and there were some right here that I thought he was shooting at. So I start yelling for him to re to shoot again. <laughs> Just in time to see the other one come flying off the cliff. So, fingers crossed. Yeah, we're hoping that in that green, big green bush up there, we got a dead ibex. <laughs> we're hoping. Because, <laughs> Lord, we've been through the <laughs> ringer on this one. Yeah, this has been uh, quite the hunt. I'll be honest, I've been humbled. I thought we were going to come down and get it done in a day, maybe two. Yeah, I thought I was going to be taking my pick of immature males and passing up females there's none of that no it turned out to be quite the challenge but an amazing place an amazing hunt i honestly can't believe it the wind's probably terrible so we'll follow suit up there oh man <laughs> i've heard people say that that this hunt is the hardest hunt in north america that they've ever done i mean and i haven't done a lot of them but it's for damn sure true about me. And I've gone farther in miles and I've had heavier packs, but there's just something about this place that just sucks the will right out of you. The terrain is insane. Everything here wants to stick, poke, stab, sting you. And these little bastards are the squirreliest animals I've ever seen. I mean, they see you a mile out and they're up and moving. And it's like they're little meth heads. But you put yourself through enough personal pain and anguish and the hunting gods see fit to smile on you. So super, super, super stoked on how this worked out. We were coming up and just happened to look up and saw a group of nannies 100 yards up the cliff and got it done. So yeah, I don't know. It, this is one of the more satisfying ends to a hunt that I've ever been on. And for this 30 pound animal, but they're just, they're just super cool. Like for the little shin guards, like they're just really cool animals. And we've had some really cool encounters. We had a 25 inch Billy at 50 yards, just working up the cliffs from us. It was real hard not to want to shoot that. I was like, yeah, maybe he's 15. He wasn't 15. Cause she's nine. And yeah, that's the other thing is walking up and seeing her at nine inches. It's probably a good thing that some of those ones that were close were uh, out of range because they're hard to tell. But anyway. Yeah, I feel like I was definitely overconfident in my calling 15. Yeah, yeah. But huge thanks uh, to Bryce, the Beaver, Kays, my dad and Dean came down and helped. It, it's impossible to do this hunt by yourself. And anyone who archery hunts these bastards, dude, you get a gold star in heaven that would be insane but we're gonna uh clean her up and pack her out so when you say we we mostly mean you right it's not really like we're gonna quarter her out she that's, fits she'll fit in a game bag that's my backpack that looks like about right yeah yeah <laughs>
shutter right up there on that rock right there. And sorry we didn't video that. We were actually, we had we were sneaking on this group over here and we got to seven hundred and some odd yards and stopped to check and Kelsch happened to look up and right here at 150. So that was great. Dean and Steve are back down around the corner over there. And that's it. That's a wrap. Probably the most effort and money per pound of meat yeah. that we've ever done for sure. I think, yeah, this is by far price per pound the most expensive game <laughs> meat you can find anywhere in the world. <laughs> Dollar and effort. Yeah. Well, that was awesome. All right. Tell you to draw the billy tag now. That's right.